Hey, what is going on guys? It's the Starsha and today we're back with another Game of Thrones Conquest video. In today's video, we're just going to be doing a simple uh, army composition go over and we're also going to be going over the benefits and the point of having meat shields and just basic stuff to do with armies and troop type. So first things first, let's just have a look at my army at the moment. So as you can see, I have tier 4, 5 and 6s and you're probably saying why in God's name do I have tier 4s and 5s when I have tier 6s unlocked obviously. So the first reason for this is because of a meat shield. So uh, most people actually have a much bigger meat shield and they normally use like tier 1s for a meat shield. Depends, some people have tier 8s as meat shields if they got the max tier troops unlocked. But basically if you go to your medic tents and you go heal. So the max I can heal is 76,200 troops. And if I look at the amount of troops I have, I have 109,000 troops. But if I'm in a fight and I lose my entire army, or if I get attacked by someone and my entire army gets hit, and everyone gets wounded, so basically what will happen is all my tier 6 will go to the medic tents, then all my tier 5s will go to the medic tents until there's no more space. Then all the tier 4s will die off with whatever tier 5s that could not fit into my medic tents. So by having a meat shield, basically what that means is your lowest tier of troops will die in a you know, in a worst case scenario, while all your higher tier troops that cost you more wood and food and stone to actually make and um, to actually produce, they will actually survive. So say I get hit now, I lose all 109,000 troops, 76,000 of those troops will be saved because 76,000, you know, will go to my tent. And of those 76,000, 15, 30, 45,000, so that's my tier 6s plus my tier 6 siege, that is 55,000 troops, those will all go to my medic tents. Then if you say I have 76,000, that's like another 20k basically, so let's just say infantry and range go there. I will lose all my cavalry, all my siege, that is all my tier 5 cavalry and siege, and I'll lose all my tier 4s. But that's fine because my tier 4s are the cheapest stuff to reproduce and rebuild, so that is what a meat shield is for. It's basically so that when your medic tents uh, or when you get hit, your medic tents fill up with your highest tier troops first and your lowest tier troops will end up dying off which is why they're a meat shield. Also, now when you're wondering like, uh, you see your troops, if you're looking at them, when, especially when you're training, right? So let's just go to my barracks, go train and let's look at tier 1. So tier 1, if you look at my health and stuff, you'll see it's low and then you go to tier 2 and there's a slight increase in everything, not much but a slight increase. Now tier 2 to tier 3, okay, there's a slight increase again in everything. You don't really see this at lower levels, but once you get to higher levels, then you, I will tell you exactly what I'm trying to show you. So tier 3 to tier 4, okay, there's an increase in everything again. Tier 4 to tier 5. So tier 4 to tier 5, you can see there's a big increase in attack, and there's a small increase in health and in defense. So if you look again, big increase in attack, small increases in health and defense. Then if you look at tier 6, so if I go to tier 6, you'll see... There's literally no increase in attack, but my health and defense just spikes dramatically. That is because even tier troops, so all your tiers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, those troops are best on defense, and your odd tier troops, those are best on attack. So your tier 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11, those troops are best for attack. Like if you look here, they look at all my health, attack, and defense stats, and then if you look at tier 11s, you'll see. Well, okay, everything's maxed, obviously. Let's use 9 and 10, that's a better example. So if you look at 9, and then you look at 10. 9, and then 10. So 9 has much higher attack, much lower health than defense. And then if you go to 10, 10's attack increases slightly, but there's a dramatic increase in both health and defense. That is because it's an even tier troop, so it's much better on defense and stuff. And you're probably saying, what is health, what is defense, and what is... Uh, attack actually good for so attack basically just means how strong your troops are on the offensive so if you have troops with high attack they will kill a lot of enemy troops okay but if you have troops that are uh, have high defense and health so if i'm using a tier 6 army right and i send them in they have much higher defense and much higher health than a tier 7 or even a tier 6 well even a tier 5 actually so tier 7 as you can see against tier 6 it has a slight increase in health and defense and a much bigger increase in attack so a tier 7 would not be as durable when it comes to actually surviving battle but it would do a lot better at actually destroying and killing enemy troops so that's just basically how troops work obviously every tier is better than the one before probably because there are increases and stuff in the troop stats themselves 
One thing that has always made me wonder is why is Unsullied here? I mean, in the show and even in the books, they're like the best um, infantry fighting force yet. Uh, you got Stormcrow footmen above them, which kind of doesn't make sense, but whatever. You know, Unsullied are only over there. So yeah, you get your tier 1s, you get your tier 3s, your 5s, your 7s, 9s and 11s. Those are all best on attack. Then you have your tier 2s, your tier 4s, your tier 6s, your tier 8s and 10s. And those troops are all best on defense and on health. So basically, your odd tier troops are best on attack and they will kill more enemy troops, but more of them will also die in battle. Even tier troops will not kill as many troops as the odd tier troop would have killed, but they will survive and you will get much more wounded instead of them dying. So instead of having much more of your troops killed up, they'll actually survive battle and only get injured instead. So that's just basically what even an odd tier troops are. That's your meat shields. And now, basically, well, in Game of Thrones Conquest, you're probably saying like, okay, you're seeing me, and a lot of big players will probably wonder, why the heck do I have infantry ranged and cavalry? Like, honestly, there's no need for that. Because in Game of Thrones Conquest, like, one troop type conquers another. So, like, you'll say, infantry just destroys ranged, for example. Or ranged just destroys cavalry, and cavalry just destroys siege, or whatever. So, that's how Game of Thrones Conquest works. And basically, cavalry is kind of useless. It's, like, the trashiest troop type at the moment. Unless WB actually release some extremely good armor sets or something for them, they're not really a viable strategy for people. So I think on my kingdom, which is Kingdom 539, there is only one player that I know of that has an all cav army, which is Baby Shark Dudu. But everyone else basically either just like goes all infantry or all ranged, or some of them go infantry and ranged, you know. And also another reason for that is because when you're training your sets, like you have like my set now is a bit weird because I have this, which basically gives me troop health and troop attack. That troop health and troop attack means for all my troops. Same for this, troop defense and troop attack is for everything. But then I have this, which just gives infantry health. This just gives ranged health and stuff. This just gives siege health. And this just gives infantry defense. And this only helps with cavalry. So most players, if they choose to go, let's say all infantry, then what they will do is their gear set that they will have will be an all infantry gear set. So every bonus here will only benefit infantry. So by doing that, they maximize their bonuses for infantry and they're only running infantry army. If you're running like an infantry and archer army, so infantry and ranged, then you will either have two loadouts, one for your infantry, one for your ranged, or you'll have one loadout that's like maybe split down the middle for both. So that's also another reason why a lot of people, they just choose one troop type and stick with that. Me personally, I just... Uh, I just don't like it. I prefer just using one of each, like, you know, having each. So as you can see, it's equal. I have 15k of each uh, tier 6, 10k of each tier 5, 3k of each tier 4, though I'll probably increase my uh, meat shield uh, size in the next uh, training event. And my siege right now is not the same, but it's just 5, 10, 10. That doesn't really matter. I'll be training more. But yeah, that's basically how it works in Game of Thrones Conquest. So if you're a new player, you should probably not do what I'm doing. And you should probably choose to focus on one or two troop types. So Cavalry is the fastest troop type, which I guess is good if you want to grab SOPs from other people and stuff. But otherwise, I would recommend probably either just going with ranged or just going with infantry or going with a mix of infantry and ranged. That could also work for you. But me, I'm just gonna go with all three because I like it and I prefer it that way. But most of you guys should choose either infantry or either ranged or if you want, go for both. And then make sure your troop sets and your equipment types are based around the army you're running. So if you're running all infantry, make sure you're having all infantry uh, equipment. If you're running ranged, make sure you have like a full night night watch set or something because that all benefits range. If you're going all cav, then you know get something that benefits cav. Though, as I said, there's only one player that I know of on my server that runs a f only cav army. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy the video, if you found the tips uh, that I gave you helpful, if you found any of this information helpful, then please do share this video with your friends that play this game. Share it on any Discord servers you are part of that play Game of Thrones Conquest. Drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy this video. If you didn't enjoy the video, guys, well, I mean, leave a dislike because you didn't enjoy it, obviously. And let me know down below in the comment section why you didn't enjoy it. Maybe was it my voice? Maybe uh, I didn't cover something that I should have covered. Maybe I spent too long on something that you felt I should have just done in one minute instead. Or, you know, just let me know down below in the comment section what I can do to improve and 
make my next video even better for you guys so that the like just like will turn to a like now if you guys didn't enjoy the video doesn't matter subscribe anyway because it's free so what the heck it'll take you literally five seconds to press the button so just subscribe whether you enjoyed the video or not anyway i'll see you guys in the next video